So yeah. when that happened, I praise God for that, because more positive came out of it than the negative. Right. But uh, that couldn't happen again in our court. You said in, in uh, Iowa, the effort to uh, defend the local congregations wasn't successful, but it was successful in Illinois. Well, it became successful in four states. Uh, probably, I don't know exactly, but 50, 60 percent of the churches, Christian churches, were in four states. Indiana, I, uh, Ohio, uh, Illinois, and yeah, and Indiana and, and Iowa, Illinois, and Ohio. Uh, Ohio. Okay. And uh, that was most most of, of the churches. So south of the Ohio River, you you mostly had the uh, non instrumental churches. Now, okay. Now you, all this Tennessee, stuff, Texas, you Kentucky. Already, you you yeah. very bright. You already know. Yes. But it comes to be see, in the division, the division that became uh, stated in the, in the census in 19, uh, between 1960 and 1919, there was separation between the non instrumental and the Christian churches, but they were all disciples. In 1934, then another case went before the court and there was separation between disciples and the non-disciples, so we got three segments. So the, the unity movement that referred to as the Restoration or, or Stone Campbell movement um, eventually then fractured it and divided into three main branches. At least. Yeah. Every time you get four people together, there's nine opinions. Right. Of course, I, yeah. So, and, then with the, and then with the non-instrumental um, part of the branch or part of the movement that you had, then the, the little micro splits, like the one oh, covers. Just like and, you're aware of, Chris, yeah. you're aware of the, the great schools, uh, Abilene. And, right. And uh, on the on the California coast, Pepperdine. Pepperdine. Mm -hmm. They have more escrow money than any church in the United States except Harvard. Yeah. Well, I remember. Um, I think Keith saying in a conversation a couple years ago that uh, historically the the non instrumental brethren that they uh, that when they approached the 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 higher education they they put they pulled their money into these larger universities. Yes, they where, did. Whereas the the, the Christian Church disciples started Bible colleges. Bible colleges, right? And so you had a bunch of little Bible colleges, which well, we have uh, uh, I don't know this day, but over fifty Bible colleges started right. over what occurred in the heritage lost the Bible chair because the Bible, I mean, the universities had Bible chair where they trained the preachers. Right, right. And, and they still do that in the non-instrumental side, but in the disciple side, oh, yeah, they phase that out and then... But Bible cards by themselves were acts of rebellion. Right. And a tragedy, I think, a deep tragedy, is it thinking that you could address, uh, I don't want to say uh, attack, but uh, confront and... And respond to... Constructively respond. You can't respond... By withdrawing. By, by getting A in unpointed Hebrew or knowing, memorizing the Lul chart. Right. See, this has been basically a failure, but for 30 years I've harped on this. Right. Uh, what do you need to know? You need to know the Bible and everything else. If you're not going to talk to anybody, there's all kinds of things you don't need to know. Right. Well, that's what I, I've heard. Well, just preach the Bible. Well, that's happened before. Sure. You can do that to people that have no problem with anything. They just don't want to hear the Bible. Well, you heard it last year. Well, I want to hear it again. Well, right. I'm not opposed to the Bible, but right. to think that that's the only information, only information that Christians need. See, because I don't think, I put it in an evangelistic mode. You can't carry out our Lord's final commission. I don't call it the Great Commission, it's his final one, because he had others. Yeah. He said, go to everybody. So if you're gonna engage everybody, that's gonna require preparation. Right. Now, if you wanna carry it out, you can start some more Bible colleges, and you can start some more death right. procedures, and uh, to get what I call theological myopia, mm -hmm. Uh, you, 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 need, uh, you need glasses, won't help you. Uh, you. You have to see who is it that sets the agenda. Right. Well, the church in the, in the 20, 20, 
century in the 21st does not set the cultural agenda. It hasn't set the agenda since the last 300 years of the development of science. And where did it develop? Western Christian civilization. Right. Now again, that's already done. I can't rewrite it or act like it's not there. And uh, all the great minds like Galileo to Newton all sure. the way, these were in a technical, defensible sense believers. They believed in God. Yeah. They saw no discrepancy between cosmology and physics and mechanics. And by the time we get into the bottom of the 19th and 20th century, the assured results of science had refuted every foundational statement uh, like Hume's attack on miracles, well, that's still used, his argument. And that's still a distortion of the nature of science as being empirical, that we get a, a evidence by gathering evidence. Well, evidence has to be interpreted. You can't interpret evidence merely by accumulating more evidence. And brilliant minds can interpret the same evidence in different ways. Now, oh, you just got this, if we just get this down and get it through to more people. Right. So the issue ultimately is not, in my estimation, over IQ. So the split between the disciples and the independent Christian churches was, like you just about to say, it wasn't over IQ, it wasn't, it wasn't over um, data necessarily, it was over epistemology. It was and, over and, and, the and philosophy. influences in the culture. Right. See, up to that time, uh, that seemed like we're going backward, but up to that time, there was no compulsory education. Right. Now, in the whole history of the church, uh, people weren't ignorant. I do not identify a non, uh, non literate person right. necessarily with a name. I know literate people that are ignorant. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but they couldn't read and write. Right. So this is, this is also the criteria of development of the structure of the Roman Catholic Church to have different leadership sure. to tell the people. That's why we got the creeds. Right, yeah, they weren't there to replace the Bible. They were there no, just no, to... no, no, no. Most people d couldn't have the Bible. First of all, wasn't translated nor printable till Gutenberg. Sure. Yeah. So all these revolutionary things happen that t changes everything for a little yeah. while. So uh, we don't have emphasis on education in our culture, in Western Christian American culture, till Second World War. Yeah. And every soldier and every every person that came back wanted to go to college and be famous and rich. Sure. Well, they were encouraged to go to college, okay? Well, that had never happened. Up to that time, fewer than 10% of American high school graduates ever even thought about going to college, right. let alone went to college. Of course, you got a job. Yeah. Uh, you run the farm or whatever you were doing. Mm -hmm. So this is a cultural revolution right before our eyes, then all of a sudden you got this radical emphasis on yeah. education. Sure. And w by the time you get it, the church is not equipped. The, the education was shaped by all the forces of science and technology, and they hate that. Right. Philosophy, I can't help it, it's sure. already happened. And uh, uh, then to address those, it's not merely to compete with them and denounce them and say, well, we don't like to do it. Well, answer him. Right, deconstruct them and unpack them. That, that is the Christian responsibility, is to understand, and I, I confront's the wrong word because that right. sounds like aggression. Cause I can't, let's see, a jewel has trained me not to be aggressive. So. <laughs> yeah. Of course, I could be in a fight every day. Well, I'm sure you come from that uh, rough uh, southern Illinois town. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we'd have a fight every day. Yeah. Let's see who's boss. But like Paul, though, Paul, as you would, as you've said many times in the past, Paul's kind of a, a, a paradigm or a model of, of how the church um, engages the, the, the culture. Marvelous. And that's okay. We'll have some Bible lesson. In the first 12 chapters of the book of Acts, which is... Uh, second volume of Luke, mm -hmm. medical doctor, and I want to say this for I get into what the point is. Uh, all of Luke's description of miracles use the medical terms in Greek medicine. Mm -hmm. Those terms do not appear in the analysis of the miracle records 
in the other Gospels, only in Luke. He used medical terminology. Sure, he was familiar but, with that. Well, his audience would have known that. See, right. that's uh, very few people are, are aware or even want to be aware of that. But I said, Luke was also expressing, describing, he was a doctor. He couldn't act like he wasn't a doctor because he was a Christian. Well, you come to Luke Acts, the first 12 chapters of Acts is really the church growing in Jewish context. Right. Now, everybody with minimal biblical knowledge is aware of a Jewish context. So you could talk to him about the Bible. The Bible of Jesus was the Old Testament. We didn't have... Right. In the Bibles we got now, we sure. don't get that. They didn't have the Schofield Study Bible. No, 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 with footnotes that tell you all the errors that they can make up. <clears throat> but anyway, in it comes to Paul. Now he was trained under Hillel. Hillel was the second, well, they were competing, they didn't like each other. Gamaliel? Gamaliel and Hillel. And he was trained under Gamaliel, which is uh, Harvard Phi Beta Kappa. Right. Four points out of three, sure. and uh, high level. Then when he became converted to Jesus Christ, a radical Jew, Pharisee of Pharisees. Right. Well, the Pharisees were the politicians in the world. That's Jesus encountered the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Essenes, and he confronted those. He's confrontational. Most people don't know enough about the Bible to know Jesus confronted all kinds of people. Right. He didn't say, we've all got to get along. He but, wasn't Mr. Rogers. No, 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 thank God for Well, anyway, here's Paul. I, I, I hesitate, always have, uh, when I used to preach regularly, to use proof text, but you, you can't go through the whole Bible every time he speaks. Right. So we have to have some boundary. Sure. So the 17th chapter of Acts, as, as half of the book of Acts, moves out into the, the pagan, so-called pagan world. Well, what do you need to know? Well, I take Acts 17 as a model. And here's a Jew, a Pharisee, trained under one of the two major rabbis, rabbis. Yeah. And it's odd that they call Jesus rabbi. They identified him with these big time people. Well, anyway, Paul was at the Areopagus, and they heard him talking about the resurrection. Right. Now you do, but most people don't seem to recognize what is right in the text. He got an audience in a pagan environment over the resurrection. Right. See, there's no resurrection possibility in the Greek Worldview. Yeah, neither Stoics or Epicureans now, ever considered. Now, that. here's the amazing thing about that that Paul had meticulous knowledge of both the Stoics and Epicureans. He could speak to them like an insider. He did, he knew what is this rabbi, this Jew, Pharisee of Pharisee, doing with that knowledge? Right. Well, I think in the providence of God, if he's ever going to talk, at the area, and here at the Supreme, the Supreme Court of the right. of Athens, and uh, they got an audience. Started with the resurrection. He attacked their worldview. I take that to be a biblical model. Even using their own literature. Their own literature. How? What is he doing? Spend his time reading this literature. Well, if he's going to talk to him, he better because he can't just quote the Bible because they don't believe the Bible. Right, it's irrelevant to them. Totally irrelevant. Well, worse than that, Chris, it's nonsense. It's not right. only irrelevant, but here's Paul, set an example. I think that's the example at Corinth and all the pagan cities. Right. He was prepared to engage those people he the way was that Peter wasn't. And Peter wasn't. Now, right. God didn't say, I don't like Peter. Right. I don't like smelly fishermen. Nor Matthew, he's a tax collector. I right. don't like crooks. <laughs> and, uh, uh, that he had this, the oddest group of people. If it, it'd go through all the twelve and Judas that betrayed him, right. uh, but uh, odd people that you're going to change the world with these people. Yeah, you're probably on. If you did uh, an analysis of leadership analysis for mega industry, 
Not one man would have been chosen. 